May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, for those who are online, wherever this morning finds you, welcome. And for all of us here at church, and Abby and Blake, what an incredible way to start worshiping together to receive your amazing gifts and settle into this worship service. Um, I call this the after party. Um, you may have known and been there that we hosted our 12th annual uh, Brews, Eats, and Beats last night on the ground here at Mount Olivet. And um, I'm always so grateful for people who come and interact with us at church without even coming into the building. Um, and it was a really, really powerful night to be community, to support community. Um, but here we are worshiping again on Sunday, and we're grateful for that. We continue to be in the Gospel of Matthew, and one of the stories that's in all four of the Gospels, and that is the feeding of the 5,000, what God's able to do with what we think is clearly not enough um, to feed the world and to feed people. But it's the dailiness of that we can't stockpile or have in our backpacks or our pantries. Uh, God in the moment, and Pastor Kristen is going to preach there. So however you come today, um, just know that God will meet us there. That is the promise with the spirit landing on your heart. A message maybe you need for today or that we need for our community as uh, we continue to live where we are. So as we begin, we name the truth about being human, uh, the limitations we have, the guilt that we hold, uh, the places uh, where we feel called but we just don't quite know how to get there. Uh, whatever that is, uh, God's mercy and love meets us right there. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings and hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak and have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst and offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and we sing together. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Pray together. Gracious God, you flood the world with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and healed the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. 
Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. Good morning. One of my favorite mementos from college is a wrinkled post-it note penned by my best friend, Deb. It reads, and I quote, Kristen Dibdahl is a bookworm. One day, returning to my favorite study table in the library, I found it sticking out of my 1989 edition of of my New Webster's Dictionary, marking the page with the very definition of, you guessed it, the word bookworm. All my friends in college knew where to find me. If I wasn't out and about on campus, I was at my office, they called it, on the second floor of Gould Library, happily tucked into a perfect study nook amid the faint vanilla scent of old books. I don't get to that office anymore, but I do have another favorite spot at my local library where I feel very much at home. Over the years, I've thought about buying into one of those new exclusive working spaces, but I would miss running into my neighbor's and being interrupted by the occasional toddler, hearing the whir of the copy machine and the hunt and peck of fingers working on a resume. Margaret Kearney, writing about the Brooklyn Public Library in the Christian century, captures the magic of the library. She writes, The logic of the public library runs counter to all other American institutions. Libraries produce nothing and sell nothing. They encourage loitering instead of policing it. They offer free services without mandating that anyone receiving them or requiring or requiring recipients to submit to a demeaning process of demonstrating need. At the library, you can learn English, you can take classes in computer literacy or Chinese brush painting, you could practice chair Zumba, you can get an ID without citizenship documents, you can see art made by people in prison. You can enjoy heat or air conditioning if your home lacks them or even if you don't have a home. And if you seek respite from the daily grind of life or a place for your mind to go grow quiet, you can find that too among the stacks. The thing about a public library is it doesn't make any sense in our capitalist society. There's no cost of membership. All are welcome to enter its doors and find something that they need even if that means a little chaos mixed in with the quiet. Books with all sorts of wild, beautiful ideas are procured and then just lent to strangers. Yes, with the hope that they will be returned someday, but mostly with the hope that they will be read. 
What the library has, it must give away, she writes, simply to become more of itself, a library. After each day is done and the last librarian shuts the lights off and locks the door somehow, there is always more to share the next day and the day after that with those who are coming next. If you think about it, the feeding of the 5,000 plus makes no sense to us for some of the reasons a public library makes no sense. There were no costs of admission to this dinner party, no barriers to entry. It was come as you are from wherever you are coming. Come with your stories and your burdens and your hopes and with your belief that being in the presence of Jesus just for a while would provide you with something you desperately needed. Was it compassion? Was it healing? Was it food for hungry bellies? Jesus said, just come and stay a while. The disciples can't make heads or tails of Jesus' direction to keep the crowd around. I don't blame them because this isn't the way the system works now, and it wasn't the way the system worked then. Food was scarce, there were no free lunches in the ancient world, and their thought to send the crowds back into the towns to fend for themselves was just intuitive. But Jesus acts in and through the power of the Holy Spirit and the abundant food that is created has to be given away. And this is the way that Jesus works among us. This is the way God works among us. There is no other way but for the Spirit to create a way when there is no way. To subvert the system that says no to open the floodgates with grace upon grace until all who are hungry are filled, including the ones who would come the next day for the baskets of leftovers. It doesn't make logical sense, but this is the strange economy of the God we worship. Like the disciples, we can only see what is happening in our midst and lend a hand. What a strange coincidence that the lectionary should rest in this familiar text, the feeding of the 5,000, the morning after such an amazing display of the Spirit in community on the Mount Olivet grounds last night. People came, some we knew, some we were just getting to know. We ate, we drank, we talked, we laughed. We enjoyed some brilliant music. The Spirit was a force for feeding souls in different ways and engaging hundreds in the giving of time and talent and resources in this work of God. And there were leftovers, were there not, for our feeding partners and those on the margins whom they serve. Any basic economic analysis would tell you that an event like this is inefficient. Why not just solicit some big donors to write some big checks to our partners and be done with it? But the Spirit's movement in the world is not efficient. It's not orderly, and it's not concerned with the easy way out. The Spirit's movement is radically concerned with touching as many as possible and alleviating the suffering of those on the margins. The Spirit's movement is chaotic and time-intensive and extravagant and counterintuitive. In the last month or so, we've been working our way through the book of Matthew with Jesus teaching us through the parables. And last week, we heard that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, like yeast, like a treasure hidden in the field, like a merchant in search of fine pearls, like a net. 
Some scholars believe that after having spent so much energy spinning stories to try to get through to his followers, Jesus decides he needs to act. He needs to make a real impression that will leave a mark. And so he physically shows them that the kingdom of heaven is like a supernatural feeding of 5,000 and more strangers with but five loaves of bread and two fish. How about this parable? As promised on a perfect summer night with no rain, no bugs, and a light breeze to keep us all comfortable, The kingdom of heaven is like a community filled to the brim with bruised eats and beets, with leftovers to share with those who need them the most. Or how about this? The kingdom of heaven is like the Brooklyn Public Library, where all it has and all it will ever have must be given away just to be more of itself. I wonder, Mount Olivet, what parable is just waiting to be written next? Amen. Please stand as we sing. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from each other. Friends online, we will connect with you and share peace in the Facebook comments. We continue um, with the offering, and um, what a beautiful story to remind us that um, God is always the host. And so uh, we only exist. There's not one ounce of money we get from anyone else in the world other than our members, people who choose to invest in God's mission specifically for this church. Um, and it never seems like it's going to make it. And God's always up to something. So just know your contribution matters, and so does the person sitting next to you. And so for all the ways that we continue to live like that day by day, trusting in God's abundance for the world um, is good. So we continue now with the offering. We have a Venmo code in the bulletin, basket up front, and a box in the back as well. Thank you. 
we pray over our offerings. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that all may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The Spirit gathers us together from so many places as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I love that song that we sang after Pastor Kristen's service. Um, God, be our host, our life, and our Lord. And I think we forget that all the time, like we have to bring something to this communion meal, like I should have done this, or I could have been more faithful. I heard a lot last night, Pastor Beth, I haven't been to church in a really long time. God doesn't use that as a stipulation. Everyone is hungry. There's nothing you need to bring today. Open your hands and receive. And just like that library, God gives it to give it away. We're not supposed to worry about tomorrow right now. Just receive and be filled and know that your presence has changed through that so you can give without concern for letting it all go because it will come again. So with those words of promise, we gather whoever we are, however we are, and God is the host, the life, and our Lord. For those online, receive these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us here at church, wafers, again, gluten-free, wine is red in the middle, grape juice on the edges. Use the mealers as you would like to pray after the meal. 
So please come forward. God is the host of this feast. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And so now we pray and we do it as a community um, for all the places where like, God, not enough. Um, not doing this well on our own. Please show up. Um, and God reminds us again, I am the host. I am the life. I am the Lord to trust in that to send us to those places not thinking that we have anything to offer and yet we do so uh, for all the ways and the places where you want to speak and pray uh, god promises to listen and so do we as your community if you are online uh, feel free to type your prayer request there and i will read those in just a minute so i'll begin with an opening and then look to you for what you want to pray for today Good and gracious God, God of abundance, we forget all the time thinking that all we see in front of us is all that's there. 
And so again, for this story that has to be told in every gospel, uh, because it so much reminds us and continues to tell us who you are, and that is you feed people, you care about how they're doing every day. And so we take what we have, even though it's clearly not enough, and when we come to you and ask you to bless it and simply open our hands to receive, it will surprise us. And we're not meant to keep track of quantity just to give it away. It is in the giving away that it becomes more than we can imagine. Uh, God, we can't ever figure this out, and we try to take matters into our own hands. And so we come today, and we just sit down in the grass and receive that grace once again. Have it come over us like rain to receive the gift that continues to come because you love us so much. So hear now the prayers that you have today here for your people. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Vu. So we're just coming to the Broman family, um, just our hearts are open. We pray for Carol, your sister-in-law, um, Ben, your brother Floyd's wife, uh, who has found out that she has terminal cancer. Um, doctors guide us, but we can never know, but the time is short that she has. Um, so for the grace of love and hospice care, and uh, for all the things that don't seem like enough, for God to show up in the moments and the days with that grace and love. And Ben, your family has been here before with the faith that's in your hearts to trust. And for Carol's life, for a future in this world and also in heaven. So tender love and blessing for the healing presence of God beyond what we can imagine that will come. God, we pray for Carol, for Floyd, for your whole family. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Mary Jane. Uh, friends of Bob and Mary Jane in a biking accident, uh, how quickly that happens, just going out for a ride, um, for healing and a wholeness along the way, for that shock, unexpectedness of that kind of injury. Uh, God, we pray for healing. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Jeannie. Yeah, thank you for reminding us. That's right. We have some great kids heading out to a week of Waffle Bible Camp in Jeannie Singh. First time sending Lucas off. So lots of things going on. Um, and may the story hold you uh, that God is about that feeding and that community and changing of lives. And we're thinking about those young people having their experiences and first experiences at church camp. Uh, for counselors and leaders and all the things um, that you may be held in this week with that abundance. God, in your mercy. Um, I'm just thinking about last night. I had a chance to talk to Michelle Ness, Executive Director of PRISM. She is um, a friend of Mount Olivet, a partner in peace, and just reminded how hard that work is. Um, they are feeding every day. Um, with pantries that are not always filled, uh, short of volunteers, and yet she is still called to that work, and we're still called to support that work. We are not experts at feeding, um, but we are held in this story of God, that God is about feeding. And so for all the ways every meal and loaves and fishes and prisms and so many other um, organizations just never give up on that day in and day out. Uh, God, help us invest in that and what you're doing with feeding. God, in your mercy. 
All right, friends online, I'm coming to you. I'm not seeing anything right now, and I will continue to watch. Um, and just uh, also, just for all that this week holds for all of us, um, to know and hear uh, that God is about something in the world um, and for the gift of that life and for what we each have to be a part of that, we pray. Um, God, into your hands now we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, in your grace, in your love. Amen. Pastor Chris, will you want to do some announcements? So um, one announcement today, um, meet uh, the high schoolers that went on the Montana trip in the fireside room uh, for conversation, and Rich Holloquay is going to lead that uh, discussion about what happened in Montana and all the things you learned and all the ways you grew closer to one another and God. So please uh, join the high schoolers that went on the trip and be a part of what they experienced um, and that community. So with that, please rise for our sending hymn. blessing the God who calls out across the universe and yet speaks within the smallest seed bless keep and sustain you now and forever Amen. go in peace be held in love thanks be to God Amen.